Welcome to this video. Today we're talking about what is the foundation of Jesus Christ. We hear people saying all the time, we would say our foundation is Jesus. And obviously this makes sense because it is true. Our foundation is Christ alone. Not our denomination or what we believe, but actually the person of Jesus Christ. But often we find ourselves using language that we actually don't really know what it means. So we say, yes, Jesus is our foundation, and we use that language, but actually we don't understand what it means. Instead of studying the scriptures, we create our own doctrines and belief systems based on you know, what we think is right. And every church, every denomination eventually establishes their own foundation and statement of faith and says, this is what we believe. And obviously everyone has verses to back up their beliefs, but really, is this necessary? Is there biblical evidence that shows us what this foundation is? Is it just faith or is there more to it? So the question is, where in the scriptures can we go to find this biblical foundation that is built on Christ? And if we go to Hebrews 6 verses 1 and 2, we read the following. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from that works and of faith toward God and of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of re resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So here we see a plain text example where we see what the foundation of Christ is. If we say, my foundation is Christ alone, what does that actually mean? And Hebrews 6 outlines this that it's, Repentance, faith towards God, baptisms, laying out of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. These are the basic principles. And these, this Hebrew 6 foundation deals with the doctrines, you know, the doctrines of the faith. And once we understand these basic elements, it actually gives us the correct worldview that we need to adapt. Because based on what you believe, and based how you, on how you read the Bible, this is how you're also going to interpret world events. This is how you're going to look at the world. This is how you're going to look at politics. This is how you're going to look at the church. All these things play into this foundation. Obviously, we don't have time to go into the details of every one of these elements, but understanding these is going to play into your worldview. And I believe every one of us, every disciple of Jesus, should be able to speak five minutes on each of these items. Because if we're sharing the, the gospel, every one of these elements are part of the gospel. We have to repent. We have to put our faith in God. We have to be baptized in water and the spirit. We need to know what it means to lay on of hands, to work with our hands, to pray for the sick, to commission people, to send out disciples through the laying of hands. We need to know what is the resurrection of the dead at the end of this age. What is this judgment that is going to come for the, those who believe and for those who don't believe. What does that judgment look like? Because these things have to be part of the gospel. If we don't include these things into our gospel understanding, it is an incomplete gospel. So if we want to be able to show people the full gospel and for them to understand actually what's going on and where this world is going and how it started, we need to be able to know all of these elements. What's interesting about the Hebrew 6 foundation is not just a New Testament foundation. Every one of these items, you will find the prophets speak about, you will find Moses speak about, Old Testament saints, they spoke about these things. So even though it was a mystery, they didn't quite fully understand it yet because they, the, the Christ was not revealed yet, they knew these things. And now the mystery is revealed and we have a full understanding of every one of these items. So e even if you ask a non-Messianic Jew, someone who doesn't believe in Jesus as the Messiah, even they would be able to explain every one of these items. But if we have many Christians who can't even explain a lot of these. So this is a very biblical, a very Jewish understanding that we all need to have. So this is the Hebrew 6 foundation. And we can also look into Matthew chapters 5 to 7, the Sermon on the Mount. And this is what Jesus said at the end of the sermon. In Matthew 7, 24 to 29, he said, Therefore, whoever hears this, these sayings of mine, so every, everything he just said, 
Matthew 5 to Matthew 7, Everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for, for it was founded on the rock. So the foundation was a rock, it was stable, that was the foundation. A rock is secure, it doesn't get tossed to and fro from every wind, but it's a stable foundation because it's built on a rock. Verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So, Jesus is likening everything he said in Matthew 5 to Matthew 7 to someone who was building his house on the rock. If we, if we hear these things he was saying in those chapters and we do them, we're building, we're building on a good foundation. And Matthew 5 to Matthew 7 reveal the spirit of the law. So he showed us how the law should be interpreted because he didn't remove the law, but he, he re reveals how the law should be lived out. And he teaches us the, the practicals of Christianity, how we're supposed to pray, fast, give, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves as a Christian. And many of us Christians, we, we do want to do all these great things, but we can't even live out Matthew 5-7 to in a practical way. We want to go on to these big things, but we haven't even started with this, this the simplicity of our life or character, the, the praxis of our faith. It also shows us our identity, that we're the salt and the light, and we're supposed to shine and be a light to the nations. It talks about how we're called to be persecuted, that we're called to be humble and blessed are the poor in spirit. And he goes over all these things that we can draw our identity from and build our character in. So the reason why this is important is because if we don't understand Hebrews 6 and Matthew 5-7, to or whole... So if we don't understand Hebrews 6 and Matthew 5-7, to our whole Christian life will be misaligned. And we're not going to have discernment because you were just, just going to believe whatever we want. We're not going to have a foundation where we can stand and say, and say, this is truth. These are the things I'm not going to be moved on. These are the things I'm going to die on. And as we draw closer to the end of this age, our discernment is going to be of utmost importance. And you will see a lot of good ideas come forth and more movements and causes that look really good, that smell like Christian, that look Christian, and it, they will tickle your ears. But behind this will be a mass deception that many Christians are going to fall for. And this might be a political deception. We have to be mindful that these good ideas that the world thinks is good, their goal is not to deceive unbelievers. Unbelievers, they are already lost. They're already fallen. They're already under the influence of the evil one. But the, the ones who have come to the light, they're the ones who they want to deceive because we are saved. And the enemy wants to take as many as you can with him. So the, the great deception is not going to be so much for the unbelievers. It's going to be so well positioned and so well, the messaging is going to be put together so well that even if possible, the elect will be deceived. And those who don't have a, have a relationship with Christ and they don't have a solid foundation, when this deception comes and it's going to tickle the ears and they don't, don't know who Christ is, they're going to be falling for this beast system. Because it's going to sound good, it's going to look good, it's going to look enticing. It's going to promise you things. But yet, it's going to be the downfall for many Christians. So guys, we need a strong foundation. I'm going to be doing a separate video on in the future, a series based on Hebrews 6. Love you guys. Grace and peace to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I will talk to you next time. Bye. Make sure to watch the next recommended video right here on the screen. And if you want to work with us to prepare your community, fellowship, or church for the Lord's return, visit our website for more information.